Hello, I'm Enzo, and how hard is it to beat Borderlands as a scavenger? The rules of this run are, I can only use gear from piles, lockers, and trash bins. Which means I won't be using gear from chests or missions, but there are some missions I will make an exception for. It'll make sense later. I started out by searching the entire first area, and discovered this spot for the first time but I didn't find any gear. Since I know that melee only is viable for quite a bit, I also decided to use my gun just to make things go faster. I would have swapped gear if I found a new weapon, but we all know my luck. Skipping all the usual stuff, now that I have access to more of the map, I looked around for some more piles. The main difference between Borderlands 1 and 2 is that one has way less lootable scavenger sources, but is a bit more generous with the drops and drop rarity. I could have explored more, but I decided to deal with these bandits real quick. This is where I die to a very unfortunate combo of not having a weapon and not being able to move and fight for your life because this is Burlands 1. The funny thing is that the area right behind the bandits I just killed had a pile that dropped my first gun. Imagine if I just did more looting instead of letting my bloodlust control me. After meeting TK Baja, collecting the stolen food was free because I literally just killed all the skags that were over here. In Skag Gully, just like with the Gwen's head in Borderlands 2, the Ladyfinger is allowed by the rules of this run but since I already used it in my unique only run, I'm not going to use it again, just because I don't like using the same weapons for multiple challenges in a row. I really thought all I'd find for a long time would be pistols, but I managed to get a shotgun as my third weapon, which is really good, especially against skags. And it's really hard to tell if this weapon dropped from the pile or a skag, but I took it because I'm pretty sure it dropped from the pile. The level up here is probably the only reason I beat Nine Toes without dying, because of the full heal it gave me. That was insanely useful. You might also have noticed that my movement is way different than usual, and that's because I'm fresh off of a Terraria Calamity mod run, video coming sometime in the future. So between that and some testing, I've gotten way better at movement and dodging enemy attacks in this game. I sometimes forget just how much XP you get from challenges early on in this game. As usual, I'm doing as many missions as possible to get tons of XP for a slightly better chance of surviving when I found my first shield. This is a massive find, especially because it also gives health regeneration, so that solves two major problems. Scar started chasing me really early on for some reason and he was pretty difficult, but nothing I couldn't handle. The only other things of note here were this baddie skag, and more importantly, my first grenade mod. I also found a sniper, which is awesome, and another pistol, but it was nowhere near as good as my current one, and I very much enjoy my new grenade. The next main objective is to kill Bonehead. Even after doing all the missions up to this point, I'm still underleveled for this fight. So in a rare change of strategy for me, I decide to play the fight slowly and tactically. Normally I would just rush in and hope for the best, but since I know how difficult this fight is, I'm not just going to run in and die for free. Unsurprisingly, this worked wonders and now I can move on with the main story. The side missions have been the same as normal, and for these scavenger runs, I don't buy ammo from vending machines, but I made an exception just for these slaughter circles, because I'm always out of ammo and scavenging for ammo is a pain, because I just have to reload the map constantly. The Lost Cave is the same as usual, pure pain. The enemies here are super difficult, and even though I have gotten really good at dodging skag attacks, there's only so much I can do with my low DPS. That's until... 
A masher? Yes, a revolver that fires seven bullets for the price of one. This is the craziest drop I've gotten in this run, and it completely changed it. Definitely for the better. This revolver does an insane amount of damage, as you can probably see. And it's the main reason I managed to clear the Lost Cave without, well, many deaths. Considering I am overleveled and have my revolver, I'm kind of just having fun in the arid hills. The enemies are absolutely no challenge here. I kill Mo and Marley every run because they give really good XP, but I really wanted to do it this run because of the pure amount of pain they caused me in the last run. And it felt very satisfying hitting crits with this revolver. It just melted Mo. In the scavenger runs, I don't use rewards from the missions. However, Borderlands 1 has a few missions that will be exempt from those rules. And if you've played Borderlands 1 before, you might know what they are. Quite literally, the scavenger missions. I mean, it's perfect. It literally is scavenger in the name. So by definition, I can use the rewards from these missions. If you disagree, then say that in the comments. But I'm just saying, I think it's kind of perfect. The other perfect thing was finding a new grenade mod and a new shield while I was scavenging for the other parts. And just like the Arid Hills, uh, scav safe house is kind of just a breeze. Even the difficult enemies at the end were extremely easy, so nothing different really. And since I've been playing for a while, my frames are just dying, so that's why I'm about to save and quit. However, I got an incendiary artifact for Lilith and a new sniper from the scavenger mission. That sniper looks like it can deal some serious damage, especially with four times fire. Yeah, I'm really glad I allowed myself to use that from the scavenger mission. And thankfully, I got the alpha skags instead of the fire baddie that can spawn at the end, making this way easier. I finished the last round of the circle of slaughter here, and then I headed to headstone mine. This is where I found another masher. Are you kidding me? The most powerful revolver I can find right now, I get a second one? I didn't need an upgrade, but I'll definitely take it. Thank you, game. Considering how well the last revolver annihilated enemies, a slightly better version, well, does the exact same. It's beautiful. And because I can phase walk, I can traverse this map a bit easier and I even managed to get to the turret without too many issues. I one-shot him, which felt really nice considering how annoying that turret is in every single run. There's not too much else of note here though. I've been using good movement to avoid a bunch of enemies, and the enemies themselves were not too difficult. Next, onto Sledge's fight. I didn't really know how it was going to go, so I just decided to run in and try my best. I know I do a ton of damage, but it appears he also does a ton of damage. So it looks like I'm going to have to resort to my normal strategy of just running around the arena and kiting him. I have a transfusion grenade for health, but as you can see it's not very quick at its job. Anyways, I know I can do a ton of consistent damage, I just need to keep my distance from Sledge. That's pretty much the whole entire fight there. At the end, I was stalling for a little bit. But that's just because I wanted to get another kill on one of his minions, so I got more XP from killing him. Just because I like XP. And my next objective was to make a quick detour to go and collect all the parts for the combat rifle, because this is the second scavenger mission. And of course, I did all the other side missions for the XP. But now I have yet another weapon, the combat rifle. I'm not a huge fan of these combat rifles where it just fires a few bullets and you have to click again. I much prefer machine guns, but I'll definitely take any damage I can find. A bit of story later, would it be funny if I said Skagzilla wasn't really difficult, but I kind of forgot to record the entire fight? Well, I kind of forgot to record the entire fight. Uh, yeah, I'll go fight Skagzilla a little bit later again to show off how easy the fight really is, but I had no real difficulty, let's just say that. As you can see, the combat rifle isn't crazy, but I do like how accurate it is. I just wish it did a bit more damage. 
That could also be due to my low proficiency because I haven't used the combat rifle yet. But I might just be so used to the crazy damage of the revolver that normal guns look super weak now. Either way though, these bandits weren't a huge issue. You know, being overleveled always helps. I am pretty sure one of them dropped a grenade right as they died. That is truly unfortunate. And just like all the other challenge runs, of course, I have to fight the vehicles on foot. I was really scared of this because if you guys know how Borderlands 1 vehicles work, you touch any part of them and it's a one shot kill if you're not in a vehicle. So I need to be very careful about how I approach them. However, Lilith's phase walk is a decent tool for dodging said vehicles. Well, considering how that vehicle went, I think they shouldn't be too bad. And while I was out doing missions, I managed to find my first class mod from a locker. Yeah, I know there's no footage of me picking it up, but you'll just have to trust me. Because there are crazier drops from lockers in this game. You guys will see later. But anyways, that is very nice. Mostly because it increases my fire chance. Which is neat considering I have, you know, a fire skill and everything. So here's the promised Skagzilla fight. I'm a bit more powerful now, but the weird thing is this fight was more difficult than the first time. Because the first time I got up really close to Skagzilla's cage and uh, I kind of cheesed Skagzilla right as they came out of the cave and shot a bunch of revolver shot into its mouth, dealing tons of damage, making this fight extremely easy. This one was a little dicey actually, I thought I was going to die. But it wasn't that bad in the end. And I thought killing the vehicles was going really well until they decided to gang up on me. Three versus one. I know I can beat them one on one. I think I can kill them two on one. But I cannot fight three at once. Just because it's impossible to dodge all three at once. No one has that type of brain capacity. So that is very annoying. The cars are starting to farm me, and I am starting to get mad. So at this point, I'm just going to go in with my vehicle and destroy them because I got close enough the last few times. And I kind of want to progress with the story. And of course, I scavenged for the revolver. I mean, another scavenger mission I can't resist. And the next fight is the one I always dread the most, Mad Mal. I, yet again, think that this is one of the most difficult bosses, if not the most difficult, besides Cromorax, in the game. And trying to fight him on foot, and let's just say the first two attempts did not go well at all. So, the main issue is, of course, his minions, the two outriders that he spawns with. So, I'm going to have to resort to the tactic of cheesing the Outriders. But only the Outriders, because I want to fight Mad Mel legitimately. It's just I can't fight three vehicles at once, as I very much learned earlier. And of course, once you destroy those two Outriders, the Mad Mel fight becomes way easier, because there's only one car to dodge and only one source of missile fire to dodge. I think the overall fight was worse than last run, but if we're only counting Mad Mel, I think Mad Mel was easier than last run. Easier to kill at least, because I have way higher damage than last run. Unlike last run, I don't need anything essential from here, but I'm definitely going to scavenge for anything I can. I'm mostly just here, of course, for the XP, which I love so much. And while I was working on some other missions, I got another new shield which is very nice. That is a very nice upgrade to my current one. And the only thing of note I found here was an electric pistol, but I'll be completely honest, it was garbage. It did like no damage and the shock wasn't even noticeable, even on shields, which is the crazy thing. So first of all, a pistol damage sucks. Second of all, another grenade killed me. Unfortunate. I also found the first legendary of the run in this chest of course it kind of makes sense i almost always find legendaries here but of course it's a revolver just teasing me with its beauty i found yet another class mod in a locker which is nice the other interesting thing is the smg damage which will oddly enough come in handy very soon 
and that is because I just completed the Scavenger SMG. Now I'll admit, it feels wrong using this one because it's a purple and times four, and especially with that SMG damage bonus from the class mod, this thing just shreds through enemies. But you know what? It kind of carried me, so it's kind of a necessary evil. In Crazy Earl Scrapyard, I did something different for once. I've actually never gone down this path to the left instead of sticking just to the straight path. And I had no clue that there was a Claptrap rescue mission here, which is awesome. I also shouldn't really have to mention it, but combat is the same. Overleveled, really good guns makes very quick work of the enemies. It's also easy because I run super fast thanks to my kill skills. I found a new repeater to replace that old shock one with, but I'll be honest, it wasn't that much better especially compared to that beautiful, powerful SMG that I have. It's been a while since I used a combat rifle, so the game gave me a new one. Doesn't seem to be much different than the old one though, still kinda sucks. But I will take the incendiary effect. That's when, you know, the curse of the elemental barrel strike back. As much as I love Lilith's Phoenix skill, it does not work very well with me. Considering, you know, it damages elemental barrels and they're kind of like my arch nemesis in the Borderlands franchise. Gotta be extra careful when there are barrels around. This one kind of just dropped two grenades. But uh, I, w I think I need a transfusion considering how bad my health situation is. The path to Krom's Canyon looks a lot like last run. It's almost an exact repeat, actually. It's pretty funny. If you've been watching me for a while, can you guess what the biggest threat to my life in these games is? Enemies? No. Elemental barrels? Yes. <sighs> Phoenix skill strikes yet again. It is the definition of a double-edged sword. The funniest part is that Krom himself wasn't even that difficult. My phase walk just allowed me to run right up to him without too many issues. And you know, I kind of just beamed him from there with my new SMG, so that was pathetically easy. The path to him was more difficult than his fight. That's kind of crazy. But him getting stuck was pretty hilarious, I have to admit. And I had no clue that there were piles on this little boat until this run. I didn't even know that little boat existed until now. The game just has to be teasing me at this rate. A masher ammo regeneration revolver. Ah, uh, I would kill to have that in a normal run. Since that combat rifle sucked, I'll definitely take a new sniper. Let me tell you, this thing slaps pretty hard and it came in handy later on in the game. So it was a great find. The next circle slaughter was way more difficult than the first, as it always is, and I had way too many close calls. But I have to say, the insane amount of XP I got from it was definitely worth it. I also went to New Haven to quickly do some side missions, and the enemies here were pretty difficult, as they always are, but I only died once, and that was to some really annoying turrets. Well, I'm pretty sure the turrets are the single most annoying enemies in this game, just because of how much damage they do. Okay, I like the mines. Janus Cobb killed. And then his brother, Taylor Cobb, killed. So I scoured the entire Trash Coast map to get as much XP as possible and hopefully some new loot, which I did not get, unfortunately, to beat the Rack Hive. Considering how much I struggled with it in the last run, I thought it was going to be bad this run. But for some reason, it wasn't horrible. I'm not sure what really changed here. I don't know why now is when I started realizing how you actually kill this thing, you know, by shooting its eyes. But Lilith's phase walk is really good against all of the rack it sends out because I can just blow them all up at once and resist damage, which is super good. 
But yeah, overall, the fight was actually really easy, which is kind of surprising to me. It's just the damage tank. That's the only real challenge it posed. And now we have access to the salt flats. The main issue, though, is there are not many areas to scavenge on this map. It was really cool to explore it all for the first time, because I hadn't done that before, but I didn't really find anything good. This combat rifle. Now, I promise it came from this pile. I would not cheat in something like this. But this is the craziest drop, well, so far, that I have found. It is pretty awesome. And it was a super lucky drop too, because man, this thing absolutely carried me through this level. It is just what I needed. I also had no clue that there was an arena in this map too. It's actually pretty neat, this entire setup. I've never found it because I've just never explored this map before. It's a shame though, I don't really have anyone to fight in it. And just like the vehicles earlier, vehicles here are the exact same. That one got stuck though, which was pretty funny. The other ones were pretty easy, which is very nice. And it's all thanks to this new assault rifle, technically machine gun, technically combat rifle that I got. This thing is beautiful. And with this new weapon that literally shreds enemies, I had a feeling that the Baron Flint fight would go very well. And indeed, that is how it went. None of the enemies posed a major threat to me, which is very nice, as I usually struggle with this fight. Just like last run, I had a close call when I was about to kill Baron Flint, but in the end, even he, too, falls before my power. Well, specifically the power of this awesome assault rifle I got. Another fight that went unusually well was Master McCloud. I suffered with this fight in the last run, but I don't know. I'd have to watch that video again to see how the fight went, but this feels infinitely easier for some reason. I don't know what really changed. I didn't even pick off his minions. I was focusing him so that when I killed an enemy, I could get the XP boost for my kill skill. Yeah, that's literally how I've been killing all the bosses at this point. I literally just want the XP boost for my kill skills. That's all I care about. I hate turrets so much. I'm so glad I'm just able to phase walk past this one and the other one that's in here. Getting revenge like this feels so good. Besides that, everything in the Crimson Fastness was normal. Except... So I literally paused the recording for a second. The second I open this locker, I get a legendary revolver. This thing kind of sucks, I'll be honest. Damage is not as good as my masher, but still. A legendary from a locker. I know lockers have really good drop rates in this game, but I was never expecting to find a legendary in any of these scavenger runs. But if it did happen, well actually it'd probably be Borderlands 3, let's be honest, but I was not expecting Borderlands 1. This is the single best find of the game. And I think if you were gonna try a scavenger run, definitely do Borderlands 1. It is easily the best game for it. The Guardians weren't too much trouble this time around. I mean, they're always annoying and tanky, but you know, I didn't die crazy or anything like that here. Burnt. I was prepared for it, but it still gets me a little bit. I... Hmm... Well, I haven't died in a while, to be fair. And right before I go to the final level, I finish the machine gun scavenger. But obviously, it's not going to be anywhere near as good as my current one. But, you know, I kind of had to do it in the spirit of the challenge. Anyways, on to the final level. It's pretty much the same as the Guardians in the last one. They're not crazy difficult, but it just took me a long time to go through this level because they are pretty tanky. The main gun that carried me here, obviously, was the machine gun. The issue is I did have limited ammo, so I used my revolver quite a bit to help, me, to help supplement my damage. 13,000 XP for a baddie guardian though, that is ridiculous. The sniper rifle I got earlier was also very helpful here, especially at picking off the Sarah guardians that were super super far away. It also has a crazy rate of fire, so it does pretty good damage. The only thing of note that actually happened here was, I kid you not, my dad getting me killed. I was talking to him, so I naturally got distracted. 
And the funniest part is, he claimed responsibility for me dying as well. Wait, what's the other weapon? Like an SMG? What? That. It's a machine gun. Oh, I can pistol him. No, that's for the other run. Oh, what's this run? The scavenger. Oh. <laughs> I blame you. My only other goal in this map was to level up, <laughs> just because I could. I just wanted the XP. I like seeing my level number increase. I completely forgot that all these guardians were at the end of the level, so they basically guaranteed my level up. And after some lovely tentacle action, we finally get to fight the destroyer. And I mean, the fight went way better than last run. It was a lot smoother, but I think it might have taken a bit longer that's just because of my terrible damage output. Since the machine gun is my only real source of damage, once I run out of ammo for it, I'm basically stuck with my crappy revolver. And that's about it. This fight just took a while. It wasn't really difficult. I had to close call and almost got knocked off the map by the rack, or whatever they're called, destroyer parasites, I guess. But overall, not a horrible fight. In the end, this run, as all of them are, was a ton of fun. I especially love Borderlands 1. There's just something so, I don't know, not nostalgic about it because I've never played it when I first started playing Borderlands 2, but it just feels good to play. The guns feel like normal guns. The revolvers slap like real revolvers do. I don't know. I also really like the skills in this game, especially Lilith's skill. Phoenix, Quicksilver, those are some of my favorites in the entire series. But with the Destroyer dead, that is the end of the run. I did the DLCs in the last run, but I think for all of my challenge runs, I'm not going to be doing DLCs because they're just not worth the time that they take. It lets me make the video and get it out a bit quicker, despite how long these still take to make. I'm hoping to optimize that soon. But anyways, thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it. And especially thank you to everyone who supports me. And this is going to be Enzo from Lookin' to Gaming, signing out.